와. 시바라. 레이루스 레코드 스피크 오브 디오도루스 as the leader of many people who leave leave the Roma lands Roma remember we're just talking the pomegranate Theodorus is none other than the Jewish king of Septimania we're talking Israelites we're just talking Kalelus the promised land the land of america this is the forbidden histories of america now follow me now theodorus is none other than the hebrew king so you have a con on con or a hebrew on hebrew or israelite on israelite scenario around a David or a Solomon. He is the son of the first Israelite king of Septimania. Dodge the, you, know, you gotta dodge your own damn hijack. Now Theodoric, Theodorus, the area, Mary, Narbonne, Narbonne. We're just talking back here, Todros. Rus. Now we'll be back to this. You know, I just want to refresh you because you're about to go in. All the way real, man. Peace and power, man. What it do to all the Ethan family, everyone surfing the wave, man. You know what I mean? However you're doing it, man. Peace up. Let's go. Now, we're just talking the warrior Davidic princes of the time of Charlemagne. Forbidden Histories of America, man, 765, 775 A.D. We're just talking the land of America. Ain't you living in America? Wouldn't this be interesting to you when you look at the, you know, Tucson artifacts in Arizona? All these swords popping out. Oh, the crosses. Yeah, they got the inscriptions on them, man. Britain, Albion, Jacob, Israel, Romana. Man, we're just talking pomegranate. Let's get it from here, man. Let go. Israel. We are born over the sea to Kalelus, an unknown land where told Texas, Sylvanus. Now, this is on a vertical beam of one of the leg crosses. This is popping out of Arizona. Artifacts, man. The lead crosses of Tucson. In 1924, there was a discovery of a certain artifacts near Tucson, Arizona. 32 lead objects, which most were crosses resembling those of medieval times. All right, we're just talking Arizona, right? Arez, Arez, Arez. We're just talking the Aztec records, right? Many of these things found in the messages of the past can also moderately be verified by Aztec records. Ninth century, man. Let's go. Oh, man. So you got stuff popping up in America and Arizona with Israel on it? Is that what you're saying? Now, on the vertical beam of one of the lead, ins lead crosses is this inscription, Councils of Great Cities Together with 700 Scholars, A.D. 800. So when the Naga looks at the, you know, definition of American in 1828 and they see the copper color races found here, you, you do see that you were already here. You were always here and you ain't talking about no 
800 history without talking Naga and Knights and Ruses. Yeah, man, you know, you, your history blows every, you know, blows the top off of everything. Everyone gets shaken up by your history. We're just talking to Texas, Sylvanus. Ruled far and wide over a people, Theodore transferred his troops to the foot of the city Rhode Island, Rhode Island. and more than 700 were captured. No gold is taken away. This is on the inscription in 800 AD, on the inscription in Arizona. Arizona, Arizona. Tucson to be exact. We'll get back in that Tucson we over with your story, man. Back in the ether, man. Surf the wave so you got to drop. Sylvanus. Alright. Theodore Roos. Theodore Re. Alright, so he transferred his troops to the foot of the city. Rode up more than 700. They were captured. No gold is taken away. Theodore a man of great courage, rules for 14 years. Jacob rules for six with the help of God nothing has to be feared in the name of Israel this is where in Arizona what else is in Arizona the Grand Canyon yeah. the Grand Canyon huh? hmm. let's go man let's go 775 Nehemiah Nehemiah Theodorus Hebrew name in 700s in America. We see Israel on the descriptions, right? Reconquered. Reconquered. The American Empire of Kalelus. Cali. Kalelus was ruled by who? Again, Sylvanus to Texas, also known as Solomon the Builder. So when you hear Sylvanus, he is also Solomon. A Solomon the Builder. Master Builder. 775 AD. Phantoms and duplicates, you say, huh? Yeah, Anatoly Fermenko said the same damn thing. Phantoms and duplicates. Follow me now. Kalelus was founded once, 1st century B.C. I dodged the B.C. hijacked by the Babylonian exilarch. We're going to talk about Babylon because we're going to go into a little bit of the Benjamin of Tadula drop. But I want, I want to stick with Sylvanus for now. Let's hang with Sylvanus. We're just uncovering some layers. I don't know where we're going. I don't have a title for this. We're just going to flow. We're flowing tonight, man. Sylvanus. Solomon. Solomon the Builder, Toltexas, Texas, Toltex. It gets deeper. But I want to stick with Sylvanus or Solomon the Builder. Also known as Sylvanus, or it was founded in the first century BC by Babylonian exilarch known as Sylvanus Ogon or Sylvanus Bravo Solomon the Second. So this Solomon II obviously is before the 775 situation with this Solomon the Builder. So you see the Solomon title being passed, just like the David title, who was pressed the child. We just connected some dots, man. You know what I mean? We just connected some dots. So when we go back into the Press the John series, man, I hop to all those surfing the wave in the Press the John hour. Every night, Monday through Friday, 9 p.m., man, we're rocking. Surfing away with all the family dropping in the ether. Let's go. It's a lot of love going on. It's a lot of connectivity happening around this Sylvanus to Texas. Now, Sylvanus Olga, or Bravo, all right? So he's Solomon. The second Babylon Exilar, 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 Nasi and Mara. Remember this, man. Ruler of Sumer. 
We're just talking Sumer, right? Ur, Chaldea, Sumer, Somerset, Somerset. In Britain, great Roma, Jewish or Hebrew ruler, right? Soldier and ancestor of the Swan Knights. Yeah, we are talking knights. You are talking David and Solomon. And you are talking knights. And you are talking Dragon. But we'll get back there. He is also, he also has a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or the Swan Boats. The ships are shaped like swans and it sails like the wings of a beautiful gliding swan. After the defeat of Sylvanus told Texas, the members of the royal family, that's you, Naga, were sent where? To Europe. Where they were under the protection of Nehemiah Theodorus, or also known as Machir, Machir Tadros. Alright? Keep this in mind. Machir Tadros is also Theodorus, and he's conquering or reconquering Solomon the Builder's kingdom from one Israelite to another Israelite. Now, you know, we surfing the wave. We, we know that the kingdom was divided after Solomon's death. We know that even David had a division in his kingdom, especially, you know, with the transgressions going on at that time. Israel III went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. So, you know, we're talking Toltecs here. So when you see the name Sylvanus Toltecs, yeah. These are his descendants going where? To the Toltec lands of Mexico. And his grandson, Machir. Amarik. So Israel III went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico and his grandson, Machir Amarik. And he's also being called Mixcoalto of the Toltecs was the grandfather of Tapuzin, Israel the seventh Edwal, priest of Kitsakoalto. <laughs> you didn't think he was gonna connect Kitsakoalto directly to Israel and the Toltecs and who? Sylvanus Toltecs. But yeah, you know, the royal family was sent back to Europe. And we know we got these crests and the connectivity with the Rus. So let's go to Europe. You know, we're going we're gonna to go to Europe in this investigation here. We're going to keep it rocking. But I want to, you know, keep this Sylvanus on your mind because I want to go to the Naga Mati, man. A lot of, you know, a lot of folks sleep on the Nag, the Naga. We can't sleep on the Naga. Now we can't sleep on the Naga. Nag Hamadi. You got all the links below. Click on them. You know I got you. You know I got you. The teachings of Sylvanus. Get it quickly, because we got you know we got a lot to flow with. So, the teachings of Sylvanus. Yeah, I was you know surprised to see any teachings of Sylvanus myself, because I don't know if they're talking about Sylvanus to Texas or Solomon or Sylvanus or Solomon. Are these just the teachings of? The Solomon we know, another Solomon. We know there's multiple Solomons. In 775, you have this Solomon. It says Kalelus was found. Kalelus, or what does Kalelus mean again? Come on. Kalelus means promised land, which is the land of where? America, which is where you are from, my Naga. You're from here. Here, Kalelus, promised land, America. This is an Israelite war popping off in 775. 
Now all this happened to weaken. Remember, divided you fall, right? So by the time you got Genghis Khan rolling up and the Khan on Khan more on more thing, I mean, damn, it was already divided. Division was already happening. 775. We're just talking Sylvanus, Tol, Texas. Or in the first century, right? Or BC, Sylvanus, Bravo. Or Sylvanus, Ogre. Solomon. Solomon. Either way, you're talking Solomon. Either way, we're talking Solomon. So let's get it. Teachings of Sylvanus. To Texas, Bravo, Ogre. Let's get it. Now, of course, this is a translation, right? This has been translated by Malcolm L. Peel. They put a lot of Christ, 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 Christ. We dodged all that hijack. And we surfed away, man. So let's get it. So let's talk about this Sylvanus. Solomon, Sylvanus, Robo, or Sylvanus, Tol, Texas. Ships of Solomon or swan boats. All right, so how many Solomons got whole, you know, fleets of ships that are connected directly to Israel and the Toltec lands of Mexico, Mixcoatl, and Kitsicoatl? I mean, we're just talking about the remnant, the remnant of the Rhoda. We're just talking Cholula, baby. We're just talking the David. Exalark family. Is it play play? This is a great doc. Get it, man. Click on it below. Great drop from uh, Daniel Low Love to sell Ma for dropping his link on us, man. Much at high. We're just talking Solomon, man. Or Sylvanus. Let's go. Nag Hammadi. Nag Hammadi. Teachings of Sylvanus. Now, look how interesting this perspective is. And we're going to keep it going. We're going to get into the Benjamin. The, of uh, Tadula, get into the uh, writings of William of Rubric, all just collecting, we're just connecting some stuff that we've been surfing away throughout the week in the ether, man, surf the wave, man, 432thedrop.com, man, we live, let's get it, the teachings of Sylvanus, abolish every childish time of life, acquire for yourself strength of mind and soul and intensify intensify the struggle against every folly of the passion of love and base wickedness i mean that does, does this sylvanus sound i don't know i mean to me this sylvanus sounds a lot like solomon solomon the builder man this Sylvanus sounds a lot like Solomon, man. Hmm, Babylon, huh? After the defeat of Sylvanus to Texas. I mean, it sounds a lot like Solomon. Let's get it. So, abolish every childish time of life. Acquire for yourself strength of mind and soul. And intensify the struggle against every folly of the passion of love and base wickedness and love of pra praise and fondness of content contention. And you look, you just love to fight and tiresome jealousy and wrath and anger and the desire of avarice. Guard your camp. Who does this sound like, man? Sound like somebody going to war? Sound like somebody got a whole fleet? A whole fleet? Ships of Solomon, they just going to war. Somebody's war ready. Somebody's fighting, right? Somebody is a Babylonian exilarch in captivity. The prince of captivity. Who is Preston John? What's going down in 765 in the land of America? I'm just talking promised land. We just talking Sylvanus or Solomon the Builder. Guard your camp and weapons 
and spears. Guard your camp and weapons and spears. Arm yourself and all your soldiers, which are the words. Listen, see, you thought it was just one dimensional, two dimensional. It's not just about the physical fight. Look at the picture Sylvanus is painting. And remember Solomon. Arm yourself and all your soldiers, which are the words. Your soldiers are the words. Let's go. And the commanders, which are the councils. The soldiers are the words. The commanders are the councils. And your mind as a guiding principle. Solomon, let's go. My son, throw every robber out of your gates. <laughs> throw every robber out of your gates. Guard all your gates with torches. What gates? Which are the words. The torches are the words. Frequency, vibration. And you will acquire through all these things a quiet life. But he who will not guard these things will become like a city which is desolate since it has been captured. All kinds of wild beasts have trampled upon it. What are we talking about? Are we just talking about a desolate city or are we talking about your mind has been captured? When your mind is captured and it's full of evil wild beasts, you find yourself just doing stuff just to do it. Wisdom. Wisdom is a gift. Wisdom is the difference. Wisdom is the difference between doing stuff just to do it and being right on the one. Right on the one. Perfect timing. But he who will not guard these things will become like a city which is desolate since it has been captured. What's been captured? All kinds of wild beasts have trump, trampled upon it. Listen up. For thoughts which are not good are evil wild beasts. So the whole thing is an allegory to let you know to guard your mind. That the robbers throw the robbers out of your gates. What are the robbers? For thoughts which are not good are evil while beasts in your city will be filled with robbers. What are the robbers? In your mind. And you will not be able to acquire peace, but only all kinds of savage wild beasts. How many wild beasts are in your mind? The wicked one who is a tyrant is lord over these. While directing this, he, the wicked one, is beneath the great mire. The whole city which is your soul will perish. Remove yourself from these things, O wretched soul. Bring your guide and your teacher. Listen. Bring your guide and your teacher. The mind is the guide. The mind is the guide, but reason is the teacher. We're just talking your framer and your shaper. How do you know we're just talking your framer and your shaper? Let's not. <laughs> Mind, your mind is the guide. Reason is the teacher. Listen, my son, to my advice. Do not show your back to your enemies and flee, but rather pursue them as a strong one. Be not an animal. In other words, don't just give up. 
and let your mind be overtaken with evil wild beasts. Be not an animal with men pursuing you, but rather be a man with you pursuing the evil wild beast, lest somehow they become victorious over you and trample upon you as on a dead man, and you pursue, you perish due to their wickedness. O oh, wretched man, what will you do if you fall into their hands? Protect yourself, lest you be delivered into the hands of your enemy. Entrust yourself to this pair of friends. This pair of friends? How do we know we're just talking about our mother and father? Our framer and shaper? Entrust yourself to this pair of friends, reason and mind, and no one will be victorious over you. May Hawa dwell in your camp. May his spirit protect your gates. And may the mind of divinity protect the walls. Let holy reason become a torch in your mind, burning the wood. Keep the fire burning, man. Burning the wood, which is the whole of sin, transgression. Wow. How do we know we're just talking our framer and shaper? Let's get down right here. We're just talking about our mother and our father. But before everything else, I'm on page 201, let's get it. Know your birth, know yourself, that is, from what substance you are, or from what race, or from what species. My naga, before everything else, man, they saying that, you know what I mean, you should just... Say kumbaya and, and just do it. Before everything else, you need to know your birth, man. Know your birthright. If you know your birth, you know who you are. You know what's owed to you. Know yourself, my naga. That is from what substance you are. What substance are you? What is Sylvanus talking about? Or excuse me, what is Solomon the Builder talking talking about Sylvanus told Texas from know from what substance you are or from what race what tribe remember this is a translation right or from what species man not get you from a whole nother species man <laughs> Understand that you have come into being from three races. Listen up. From the earth, from the formed, and from the created. The body has come into being from the earth with an earthly substance. So Venus is breaking it down. Let's get it. The body has come into being from the earth with an earthly substance. But the formed, for the sake of the soul has come into being from the thought of the divine. Thought. The created, however, is the mind, which has come into being in conformity with the image of Hawa. The divine mind has, subs has substance from the divine, but the soul is that which he, Hawa, formed for their own hearts. So the divine mind has substance, energy, frequency, vibration from Hawa. We're not just talking about your brain. We're talking about your mind, the energy within. And then you have the energy within, you know what I'm saying, your soul, which is the feminine. But let's go get it. Let's go get it. But the soul is that which Hawa formed for their own hearts. How do we know we're not? How do we know we're talking about your framer and your shaper? What is Sylvanus Solomon the Builder talking about? 
their hearts. The divine mind has substance from the divine, but the soul is that which Hawa, God they say, Hawa, formed for their own hearts. Multiple hearts, huh? For I think that it, that it, the soul, exists. Listen up, it's going to tell you everything you need to know right here. Let's get it. For I think that it, the soul, right, Mama, Ruach, exist as wife of that which has come into being in conformity with the image. The created, however, is the mind which has come into conformity with the image of Hawa. For I think that the soul exists as a wife, your ruah, your soul exists as a wife of that which has come into conformity with the image, the mind, your thought process, your thought is sound, which is the word, right? Thought, sound, those that can read minds can hear thoughts, can hear the sound. But the soul exists as a wife in conformity with the image. But matter is the substance of the body which has come into being from the earth. If you mix yourself, what does it mean? If you mix yourself, you will, you will acquire the three parts as you fall from virtue into inferiority. Live according to the mind. Thought, sound, hear the sound, surf the way. Do not think about things pertaining to flesh. Acquire strength, for the mind is strong. And if you fall from the other, you will have become male hyphen female. What does that mean, male female? Well, we just talked about the mind being the male and the soul being the female. You remember how the spirit signs had the Martians rolling up? On you and the spirit science animated joint. And they say how the Martians, you know what I'm saying, came with this male, this male spirit, and they transformed all the female spirited people here into male spirits with their spells and necromancy and all their technology, right? So in other words, they flipped us inside out. Our our, our spirit, our ruach is is female. Our mind, our thought is male it's a marriage going on it's intertwined it's male female energy coming together forming this you know what I'm saying creation so if you fall from this other you have become male female right served away and if you cast out yourself from the substance of the mind which is thought you have cut off the male part and turned yourself to the female part alone you have become psychic since you have received the substance of the form. <laughs> what does it mean? You have become psychic since you received the substance of the form. In other words, you cut off the male part and turned yourself to the female part alone. We're just talking energy and frequency. All right? You have become psychic. All right, so you got the psychics or the oracles since you have receive the substance of the form you got the juice you got the substance of the form the framer all right if you cast out the smallest part of this so that you do not acquire it again as a human part you have accepted for yourself the animal thought and likeness so if you cast out your mama all right you have accepted this animal nature and likeness. You have become fleshly since you have taken on animal nature. For if it is difficult to find a psychical or psychic man, how much more so to find Hawa. But I say that Hawa is the spiritual one. Man has taken shape from the substance 
of Hawa. The divine soul shares partly in this. Furthermore, it shares partly in the flesh. I mean, are we talking Sylvanus? Are we talking Solomon? Solomon. And I want to dig, I mean, there's so much to dig on. This is one of those joints you got to, you know, truly read with a 360 degree perspective, man. The dragonfly perspective now. Taking that perspective. We're digging on the travels of the Benjamin, the Benjamin of Tadula. Because it came up, you know, I was digging on this drop. This Marco Polo drop, you know. Sometimes you gotta get your Marco Polo on. And I'm reading the introduction like like normally, you know, I, I like to do. And I'll start it right here, man. The friar ordered Orderic and Rabbi Benjamin. Alright, so I got this Benjamin. I said I heard about a Benjamin before. About 20 years after Marco Polo returned from the court of Kublai Khan, a Franciscan friar was sent to the east as part of the extended missionary movement. We say we are in the east. So a lot of these, a lot of these travels from this Benjamin to Dula seem to have a lot to do with Kalelus as well. But you know, just to hide it, they seem to be just trying to focus on certain areas and so-called Asian, but let's go, you know, maybe we can decipher some of this, man, so, we're just talking Benjamin of Tadula, his record of India, Sumatra, Sumatra, uh, you know what I mean, Java, and China, where he spent three years in faithful and in intelligent, is faithful and intelligent, he returned over land through Tibet and Persia, and was the first traveler after Marco Polo to describe these things. He saw the shrine of St. Thomas and described many things that Marco Polo felt to mention. Now, a lot of this stuff is connected to South America. A lot of this St. Thomas situation is connected to South America. This Tibet is connected already to America. You already know that. So, surf the wave on different, you know what I'm saying, levels. You know what I mean? Surf the wave of all or most of this happening in America since you already know that it's no secret anymore 775 Nehemiah Theodore reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus or the promised land right so that's 775 already popping off right here why wouldn't this be a big piece of the puzzle when you're talking about the Marco Polo situation if this is all going down in America already we understand that you know China's being called Cat, uh, Cathay and all that's already being connected, man, with um, this Kara Katai. You know what I mean? And we got a map of Cathay being in America anyway. So let's go. Just just keep that present at all times, man. Know where you are. Know where you at. The old world. You in the old world. So this is the old Persia. This is the old China. This is a lot of that old stuff. He saw the shrine of St. Thomas. Soon after his death in 1331, his fame as saint and traveler spread over the whole of Europe. Rabbi Benjamin of Tadula. So I said, okay, let's go. May have been, may be said to have been the first of the medieval travelers, for he journeyed farther into the eastern countries than any of his predecessors while he traveled many years before. Caparni and Rubric. We're about to get some Rubric as well, the William of Rubric. They are nevertheless important for they give us a picture of Western Asia before the Mongols swept through, leaving their wake of slaughter and ruin. We gain through his record an idea of the Eastern civilizations where we were almost entirely extinguished by Mongol invasion. We learn something of the culture we studied, we studied and preserved many of the grand. Greek and Latin 
classics while Europe was going through its dark ages. And that's really the telltale. Their dark ages is your rulership. Rabbi Benjamin was a Jew from Spain. His, his descriptions are quite accurate in his love of the marvelous lens, romance, and color. So when they put them extras on it, I know he's probably speaking some truth. Because, you know what I'm saying, when they're you know, doing their translation of these introductions, oh, his love for the marvelous lens romance. So they're trying to seem like he's out of his mind. He just likes crazy stuff. He just loves the marvelous. But let's go. He, now, what's, what's unique about the perspective of this Rabbi Benjamin? He names the principal Jews or Hebrews of the congregation in each city that he visited and makes note of trade and commerce. He tells about the Hebrew prince of the captivity. Let's ask Google a question. Hey, yo, Google, man, can you give me the definition of ex lark man? You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. One of a line of hereditary rulers of the Hebrew community in Babylon from about 2nd century AD to the beginning of the 11th century. So the ruler of the Hebrews, or what they call it the Hebrew prince, right, is also called an exilarch. So, when you're seeing this pop up, Pay attention. When you're talking Machir Theodorus in about 765 AD, Nehemiah Theodorus becomes the Western Exilarch. Hereditary ruler of the Hebrews, the Israelites. They said from the 2nd century to 11th century. Well, I think that fits this just about right. 2nd century to 11th century. During what? In Babylonia. Ancient Empire, Southwest Asia. So we're just really talking the Byzantine, you know what I mean? In Lower Euphrates Valley, its greatest period. Alright, you got the little timelines. We're just talking Exilarchs, man. Exilarchs, man. We're just talking Exilarchs, man. Exilarch David. Son of Prester John. Wong Khan. Wong Khan. I want to pick up a little bit where we left off as well, man, with the Prester John. Legend and the sources on that last drive. You know, I got cut off right at the good part, so I want to get that as well, man. But, you know, we're just talking present down, man. You know, the panty, right? Wang Khan. So his son is Exilarch David, which will also make him a David. All right, so. All right, cool, cool. 
cool. We know we're talking to exilarchs. We know we're just talking to rulers during this captivity, right? So Theodore can set Theodore Reek in 765. Nehemiah becomes the Western Exilarch. In 765, he becomes Western Exilarch. And in 775, he rolls on Solomon the Builder's Kingdom right here in America. But that's not to say that he didn't have any type of rightful claim already here. You know what I mean? These are just Israelites doing their thing. Now, look, man. He tells about the Hebrew prince of the captivity, the Exilarch, right? As well as the ruins of the Tower of Babel. We're just talking Babylonian Exilarchs, right? I mean, I'm not tripping, right? One of the hereditary rulers of the Jewish community in Babylonia. Rulers. Rulers of the Jewish community, all right? So these are the, the kings, the Israelite kings. And what they're calling Babylonia. He tells about the Hebrew prince. So this rabbi Benjamin of Tadula talks about these Hebrew. They don't say Jewish, do they? They don't say Jewish, do they? So since they say Hebrew, we're saying Hebrew. Body bag, Daniel. And this is from Manuel Com. Kamroth. Alright, so this is old Dark Ages shit. So they keep saying the Jews and Jewish. Nah, man. We're just talking about the Hebrew prince, baby. He was much interested in the stories he heard of the discovery of the tomb of David. Don't seem like it's play play. If anything, you're establishing David. If anything, you're establishing your Davidic kingdom and when you see Papal Bull talk about your kingdoms being taken here you see which kingdom you're talking about locates the spot of Lot's wife was changed to pillar of salt many of the legends he records the information he collects agrees in the main with the writings of contemporary Arabian ge geographers and through him we know the fact that Jews in the east were famous for the arts of dyeing and glass making his travel narrative unlike the others contained in this volume is one of medieval peace peace and culture pay attention because they gonna give he's given a depiction of peace and culture rather than primitive force and ignorance when you talk mongols are now they gotta degrade you to make you a savage right a, a savage rebellious thug ignorant you don't know anything primitive force remember the last noble image of the negro we're just talking press john i mean you gotta ask yourself did a black man discover the found of you look out for that press of john 36 because when this image is taken out and replaced with a savage, and they say you just came from Africa off a boat, no, we didn't just find the copper colored Naga here, he came from somewhere else. So we can take his land. We're just talking Preston John. But hold that thought, because we're going to get back here. Oh, Sylvanus. Sylvanus got the drop. He's letting you know about your framer and your shaper. The mind, the soul, the combination is all already within us, man. Preston John has a kingdom in with Susa. Every month, seven kings, 62 dukes, 365 counts serve us at our table.
every day at our table. 12 archbishops E at our right hand side and another on our left. 20 bishops E beside the patriarch St. Thomas. St. Thomas is rocking in Preston John's kingdom. David, what do you think this has to do with Kalelus? The promised land in America, my noggin? Is you getting the picture? Being painted by Rabbi Benjamin of Tadula. All right. So his narrative, unlike others contained in this volume, is one of peace and culture. And this is the real spill that they found here. Peace and culture. A kingdom of peace and culture. All right, let's jump in this Benjamin up to do it. Click that link. Oh, yeah, you know, the Hebrew preface, man. They know what they're talking about. Now, I want to go all the way down to page 17. You know, I told you we flow today, man. I just, I just want to flow with y'all tonight, man. You know, I hope you had a wonderful Shabbat. Let's keep it going. Now, they're going to tell a story about a David. You know, we, we talked about Davids around here. You know, no, no problem. No sweat. David's, David's everywhere, right? Exilarchs everywhere. Exilarch David's everywhere. Let's get it, man. Page 17, Benjamin Tadula. Click the link. Ten years ago, there arose a man of the name David L. Roy of the city of Amaria. Damn, all they missing is a C. And you have Amarica. Ain't that some crazy stuff, huh? All they're missing is one C. Amaria. Let's go. Who had studied under the, under the Prince of the Captivity. Prince of the Captivity. So you just again talking about Exilarchs. Ruler of the Jewish community in Babylonia. Babylon. Exilarch. All right, Prince of the Captivity, his die, his die, his die. And under Eli, the president of the College of John Jacob in the city of Baghdad, and one who became an excellent scholar, being well-versed in Mosaic law, in the decisions of rabbis and the Talmud. Let's keep going, man. Dodge your own hijack, stay focused, let's get it. Understanding also the profane sciences, the language and the writings of the Mohammedans, and the scriptures of the magicians and enchanters, he made up his mind to rise in rebellion against the king of Persia to unite and collect the Jews who lived in the mountains of Kop, Kopton, and with them to engage in war with all Gentiles, making the conquest of Jerusalem his final object. He gave signs to the Jews by false miracles. <laughs> Getting someone's interpretation, I mean, were they false miracles? Sounds a lot like Jesus, right? He gave signs to the Jews. Think about Jesus. Now, we're just talking about this David. What they call him David L. Slash Roy. All right. Gave signs to the Hebrews by false miracles and assured them, The Lord has sent me to conquer Jerusalem and to deliver you from the yoke of the Gentiles. Some of the Jews that believed him and called him Messiah. They called David Messiah, not Jesus. If this David was called a Messiah, during the time of Benjamin of Tadula in the Dark Ages. 
What does that tell you? About King David. Prestige. Mashiach. Messenger. Connection. Meteor. Prestige. So some of the Jews called him Messiah. When the king of Persia became acquainted with these circumstances, he sent and summoned David into his presence. Now it sounds like the Daniel story, right? The king of Persia, David, Daniel. The latter went without fear, and when brought before the court, he asked, Art thou the king of the Jews? So he asked him, was he the king of the Jews? What does that sound like? Come on. He was asked if he's the king of the Jews, right? <laughs> All right. So to which he made answer, I am. Upon this, the king immediately commanded that he should be secured and put into prison where the captives are kept who are imprisoned for life. Come on, man. Whose stories did he sound like? This is from, this is from, uh, this, this is the first hand account <laughs> of Rabbi Benjamin. All right, we're only reading this because somebody vouched for him in the Marco Polo letters. Rabbi Benjamin from, was a Jew from Spain. His descriptions are quite accurate. His descriptions are quite accurate. His descriptions are accurate. <laughs> Let's go, man. I ain't making this stuff up. Let's just put it together. So we got the uh, David. All right, all right, let's get this. <laughs> let's get this part right here, man. Look at the miracles being performed, and tell me this don't sound like Jesus, man. All right, <laughs> let's go. We're just talking to David. So upon this, so he said, "I am the King of the Jews." So he was in prison. All right. After three days. Three days, right? Somebody else rose in three days? Let's go. After three days, when the king sat in council to take the advice of his nobles and officers respecting the Jews who had rebelled against the authority, David appeared among them, having liberated himself. Jesus rises in three days, liberates himself from the tomb, right? David rises in three days, <laughs> liberates himself from, from prison without human aid. So it was a miracle. Right? When the king beheld him, he inquired, Who has brought you hither? Or who has set thee at liberty? Who freed you, man? To which David said, My own wisdom and sub subtility subtility eh? for verily i fear neither thee nor the servants i ain't scared of nothing man i ain't scared of nothing jack what's david talking about man he said man how'd you get freeze man with my own wisdom my mama my intelligence pretty much he's saying my framer and my shaper because you remember so, to be subtle is to be intelligent. You're just talking about the mind and love to love to Sylvanus who broke down how the mind or your thought is your shaper, is masculine, and your ruach, your wisdom, your ruach, your breath, your <gasps> is your mama. For verily I fear neither you or your servants. The king immediately commanded that he should be seized, but the servants answered and said, We see him not and are aware of his presence only by hearing the sound of his voice. So he went invisible, man. We see him not and are aware of his presence only by the sound of his voice. The king 
was very much astonished at David's exceedingly subtlety. <laughs> and thus addressed him, I know, I now go my own way. And he went out, followed by the king and his nobles and servants to the banks of the river, where he took his shawl, spread it on the water, and crossed it there. Oh. Come on, man. Come on, man. Just talking Davids, man. I, mean, I just want to get this right, because they said shawl, right? What's a shawl? A piece of fabric worn by, they say women, all right, over the shoulders or head. So we're talking fabric, man. He walked on water, man. Am I making this up? Or am I reading out the Benjamin, the travels of the Benjamin to do it? You can get it right now in the drive library, man. Go surf the way. Wow. Oh, man, please keep that water flowing. For aqua V. Keep that swag frequency flowing for Aqua V, man. Make sure you are getting the sister back in the road again. Back on the road again. And yeah, man, we got the dragons on the wall and the free Phineas shirts in the in the uh, drop shop, man. So anytime, man, you're able to come over here and get suited up in the drop shop, man. But let's go. Let go, man. You can come in the library. Get that Benjamin of Tadula right there, man. The travels of Benjamin of Tadula. To do the sacred text, man. Get the drop. You already know. A lot's dropping in the library. All right, this is your free resource. Go ahead and dig on it anytime. Look out for those updates. They're dropping soon. I got y'all. I got y'all. Let's go. So what happened with this uh, walk on water uh, scenario, man? <laughs> y'all didn't think David was walking on water? Let's go, man. King of the Jews, right? Are you the king of the Jews? I am. They put him in jail. Three days he rose out of that situation. Right. He said, my frame and my shaper got me, man. Wisdom and subtility, right? Subtility. Let's look up subtility. So I'm not really giving too much on this word. Tenuity. Uh, so, you, you know, we'll just say subtle because we know that it's, that's the shortened verb. Shortened form of the joint. Especially a change of distinction so delicate or precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe. So, making use of clever or indirect methods to achieve something. Craftiness. Alright, so you got intelligence basically. So, when he's saying that, my own wisdom and subtlety. Alright, it's my own craftiness, my own drop. So I fear neither you or your servants. So the king was very astonished at David's exceeding craftiness, right? I now go my own way. So he went out to go to the banks of the river. Let's get it right here. Where he took his shawl or fabric, spread it upon the water and crossed it. Damn, David. Damn, Jesus. Let's go. At that moment, he became visible. So he, he was invisible for real. Then they could see him crossing the water. 
man, come on, man. And all the servants of the king saw him cross the water, the river, on the shawl, on the fabric. Man, they still didn't see him, just the fabric. He was pursued by them in boats, but without success. And they all confessed that no magician, no magi, David the magi, upon the earth could equal him. What does that sound like? Who is Prester John? So this is in the... We're getting this out of the Travels of Benjamin and to do it. Let's keep it going. Because I'm just asking you, and you asking me, who is Prester John? We're connecting the David Sauceland's understanding that this is already connected with the Prester John, Raja here, Raja Chola the second. Now, when we talk about this rubric, and this is what we're going to get for the dismount, but hold up, man. Let's just pull this up right quick because we just talked about Theodorus, right? Theodorus or Machir Todros. Machir Todros. of Narbonne. Click the link below, pull it up. Narbonne, a lost medieval Jewish kingdom. You're just talking Hebrews in France, man. You're just talking the Franks, man. You're just talking the Franks. And now you're getting the picture. Theodorus is representing the Franks. The Franks, the Israelite Davidic Frankish kingdom. All right. At this time going, you know what I'm saying, to war with Solomon the Builder. Who was who? Judah. Let's go. So Narbonne, they called it a lost Jewish empire, 8th century. So we're still talking the 700s, right? 775, right? 775, right? 8th century, right? Let's go. Alright. The Frankish kings. That's what I wanted. The Frankish kings wanted a Jew of noble blood to rule its Jewish kingdom. Or, we you know, we're talking Hebrew. Again, there are differences as to why a fight over succession, a fight over secession in the Hebrew community is one reason mentioned. A fight over secession. 775, Theodorus reconquers American Empire of Kalelus, fight over secession. That man was Rabbi Machir. Machir Todros, a noted Babylonian scholar who was brought to Narbonne to establish a school of Talmudic, Talmudic studies. All right. As the story goes, Machir was a prince in Hebrew, a Nazi of Davidic descent. So forbidden histories ain't bullshitting with you, man. What they called, who was his full name? Theodorus, right? Machir, Todros, or Nehemiah. Naaman, Amor, Amor, Am Amor, Ben Amor. Where's the Nazi of Mar? Where's that Nazi draft man? Oh, here we 
we go. Nasi of Mara. All right, man. So you got this Nasi on this side, which is the Sylvanus side. Now, how did he become the Nasi? By conquering Solomon. So as the story goes, Machir was prince in Hebrew, Nasi of Davidic descent. Well, he had to roll up on Solomon the Builder, who already had the title of Nasi. Nasi of Mora, Mora, ruler of Sumer. Come on. As a member of the Hebrew royal family, was it eligible to hold the honorary position of Exilar? Here we go, Exilar. So that's why they say right here that he is a, he became a Western Exilar, leader of all the Hebrews of the revived Western Roman Empire of Charlemagne. In our Facebook, man. So, he now held this honorary position of Exilar, ruler of the exiled Jews in Babylon, Babylonian Exilar. Upon his arrival in Narbonne, Machir was ceded large territories outside the city that had been reconquered from the Muslims and extended. Exempted from military service and royal taxes, Machir directed the affairs of the Hebrew community and desired a dynasty. He and his descendants were not so sovereign kings, but rather rex judaerum, judaerum, Latin for king of the Jews. King of the Jews, huh? I mean, that's what they was asking David. Who else is king of the Jews? We're just talking David L. Ray. They say, hey man, art thou the king of the Jews? To which he made the answer, I am. Before he started walking on water and, uh, you know, got out of prison and stuff and laid low. Now he's hot. Now, now, uh, Theodorus got the title. Ruler of the exiled Jews. All right, king of the Jews, right? The Rex Judar Judarium. King of the Jews. All right. Some scholars have also scoffed at the figure. So some people don't even want to rock with Theodorus. But the historical sources are absolutely unambiguous about the presence in Norban of a Rex Judor Orum, or King of the Jews, in Norban, or France, or the Franks. They said while the Jewish kings did not rule over Christians, their subjects received parental treatment. Not only could they have Christian servants, <laughs> They might have enjoyed privileges that Christians didn't, such as the right to bear arms at times. Why? Because they're Templars? Let's go. Christians were shocked and peeved by the scandalous behavior. Have you heard of Ab Agobard of Lyon? Asked Caputo. He was a bishop and he got into a fight with King Louis the Pious, who is Charlemagne's son. Remember, this is during the time of Charlemagne, right? Western Exilarg and leader of all the Jews and revived empire, Roman Empire of Charlemagne, Davidic princesses of the time of Charlemagne. So the story rocks. The story rocks. He was the bishop and he got into a fight with King Louis the Pious, Charlemagne's son in the 9th century. That's the 800s. Louis had given Jews incredible freedom of life and trade. And Abogar writes a letter of complaint saying that the Jews were getting more privileges than the Christians and that the king is threatening Christendom. 
Narbonne at this time was a major power. We're talking the Franks among the complex regional web of principalities. Quote, it is a right, it is right above the Pyrenees, right on the threshold of the Christian authority. It is the site of important battles. It is an important trade site. Now skipping down, it says Benjamin of Tadula, the great Jewish traveler of the Middle Ages who passed through Narbonne on his way to the Orient in the 12th century. 1100s, okay? So all this is going, all this is going down in the 1100s, man. <laughs> this is the real spill. Describe Narbonne as mistress of Hebraic law. So this Narbonne what they say this is Theodoris, right? King of Septimania. I marry, like I marry cut, right? I marry De Narbonne, right? So this Narbonne is a mistress of Hebraic law with Jews there of the race of David who possess great goods under the protection of the princes of the country. Man, we're just talking about Theodorus. Man, we just read from the, you know what I'm saying, Sylvanus drop. The Solomon drop teachings of Sylvanus of the Nag Hammadi. And the last thing we're going to do is get into this William of Rubric, man. And this John the Baptist connection that just, you know, jumped on out, man. Jumped on out. All praise, wah, wah. This is an interesting map, man. Love to tie battle. She dropped this great book. This map of the British Empire in America, man. These are just different maps. Let me see if I can get this link going here. You know, when you start to you know, really see what's popping around here, man, these, these maps get more and more interesting. Uh, she said, check out page, I think, 51, 52. Let's see. This might be going a little slow. I might be able to get it later. Let go, let go. Don't hijack me now. Don't you hijack us now, Dr. Hijack. Good time to take a Hawaii whenever they try to hijack us, man. Matter of fact, while this is loading up, let me get this part right here. This is where we left off in the uh, Press of John, was it 35? And just dig on, you know what I mean? This is off the uh, William of Rubric itinerary. It says, Then, this is at the time, lived Genghis, a certain worker of the Moab people. And he stole what he could of Ang Khan or Prester John's animals. Right? Prester John's animals. In such measure that the shepherds complained to their lord. Oh, all right, or Preston John. Then he brought together an army and rode to the land of Moal, M-O-A-L. Sounds a lot like Moab, right? Complaining that the 
that gang that Genghis and his and he Genghis fled amongst the Tartars and he hid there then Presta John having taken plunder from the Moab and from the Tartars turned back so Presta John went to confront Genghis Khan in the land of Moab then that Genghis Khan addressed those Tartars these Moal saying because we are without a duke our neighbors overwhelm us Because we are without a duke our neighbors overwhelm us So Genghis Khan at that time had no titles He had to you know convince the people to give him a title He said because we are without a duke our neighbors overwhelm us and the Tartars and the Moals made him duke then gathering an army in secret he made an attack against Prester John and defeated him. This is in the twelve early twelve hundreds. He defeated him and he fled to Cathay. Alright. Now his daughter was captured there, and Genghis gave her to one of his sons as a wife. Now he's marrying in to Prester John's family, right? He's trying to steal the Khan. Marry in to Prester John's family. Steal the Khan. Let me re let me reboot this baby. So we can get our dismount on. Cause you know, sometimes these links be all the times are jammed up. Alright, so let me get this last part here. So Genghis took Prester John's daughters married them into his family he took his he took his daughter that was captured there Genghis gave her to one of his sons as a wife from which he received from which union she received she she who now reigns Mongol or he who now reigns Mongol so Mongu right so you got the Mongols and they have a son named Mongu very similar right Mangu, Mango, Mangu, Mango, Mongols, Mongolians, Mangu. So Genghis Khan has a son named Mangu from King David's daughter. Now they end up going, love to carry May with that great length. They end up going, you know, starting up or, you know, at least you know adding to this uh, Inca situation so now they got a, a presence among the Inca suddenly you know what I mean so they're popping up with their elephants in South America it's a great doc called the, the historical researchers of you know Genghis Khan America all that it's, it's all on the uh, you know go to the site just type in historical researchers Genghis Khan is gonna pop up and all that is documenting Genghis Khan Popping stuff off in the America. Now it says then Genghis sent forth those Tartars everywhere, and for that reason their name spread because everywhere it was cried out, "Look out, the Tartars are coming!" But recently, almost every time was obliterated through repeated battles. Repeated battles. From there, these Moals recently wish to extinguish that name and raise their own so this is where we got cut off last time man so now these Moals wanted to extinguish that name and raise their own name and love to Jackie Anthony who dropped major drop on the Moals <clears throat> uh, you know having to do with these hornless you know what I mean which of course has a deeper meaning you know this desolate wasteland so when you look up Moal you just got like this this wasteland this people love this wasteland all right now that we got our links back up man let's just uh flow with this uh this rubric drop William of Rubric yeah Now, these Moal people, right? M-O-A-L. From there, these Moals recently wished to extinguish that name 
So they don't want that mobile name no more, okay? It's getting, you know, this is when they're, this is when they're playing the okie doke. They're switching up the names on you, switching up the titles. And they wanted to raise a name of their own. That land in which they first lived and where the courts of Genghis Khan is to this day is called Onan Karuli. Spelled O N A N K E R U L E. But because Kara Korum is the region around which their first acquisition was, they reserved that city for their royalty and they elected their Khan near there. So you see, this is the, you know, hijack of the Khans. Now, I'm reading out of the uh, Preston John and Legend of Sources by Keegan Brewer. Love to the Battle family. Always got to get in that high for his great work. And just this part right here says, now the aforesaid Uyghurs or Uyghurs, sounds like the Ogres or, you know, the same all Mac drop that we were connecting through numerous, uh, so I believe have reached the stage where they only believe in one God and these men live in the cities that, that first submitted to Genghis Khan. So they live in the cities that first submitted to Genghis Khan. Whereupon he gave his daughter to the king, and this Korakoru is at is as it were in their territory, and the whole land of King or Prester John and Onk, his brother, is around their lands. But they are in the pastures to the north, and the Uyghurs are between the mountains to the south. It is from these men that the Moals took their letters. Took their letters. And these men are their great writers. And almost all Nestorians know their letters. Almost all Nestorians know their letters. What does it mean, man? So they got their writing. They got, they got all the drop. This is how Moal came up. Genghis Khan came up pretty much jacking everybody's things, you know what I'm saying, their culture, their things, because he wanted to be priestly. Now, in the William of Rubric, eastern parts of the world, this has a great intro to it, man, that, you know, that's a nice little connection for the dismount, you know what I mean? That'll be all right, let's get it, man. Hop, shot, bada, let's get it. Keep surfing the way. Introductory again. This is the William of Rubric. Twelve fifty three. So we're still around that thirteenth century mark, and you know we keep being put in these directions to get these certain uh, authors, man, uh, historians. You know what I mean? Like William of Rubric. There's another uh, William Bede or Beddy that keeps popping up. You know, uh, of course, the uh, Rabbi Benjamin of Tadula, who that we just got as well. In 1222, the Mongols already masters of all northern. Asia from the Chinese Sea to the Lake Balkash, having destroyed the Khoraza, Khorasmian Empire and ravaged Transcaucasia, Transcaucasia, broke through the Caucasus and spread ruin and terror over southern Russia, then known as Kipkak, in the Valley of Volga. Now I want to pick it up right here. Let's get right to it. Let's just pick it up right here, man. 
So I'm on page 24 of the PDF. Let's go. So the Pope must have been encouraged to believe that his representations might have some effect on the Mongol sovereign by the prevailing belief in the existence somewhere in the far east, my Naga, at you, of who they're calling Nestorian, which only means old king renowned for wise counsel, a wise old king like Solomon. Realm of Prester John. So they believed in the existence somewhere in the farthest India, right, of this Prester John. And probably by the more recent information given him by the Russian bishop named Peter, who had fled before the invaders to Lyons. This Lyons is popping up again. And uh, all right, you got Lyons. Lyons is popping up. And the Mongols worshipped one god. So they weren't all oh, this savage with all these different gods that they, that they believed in, right? One creator, right? And were not without some religious belief. So it talks about the Pope organizing two missions to the Mongols and the leaders of each of them. He gave letters to be delivered. I just want to look at the fine print, man, because they're saying something down here. And the fine print, let's see if we can get it bigger. The bishop, by the way, adds still a little more confusion to the story of Preston John by apparently confounding him with John the Baptist. Now, we've been surfing the wave like, is it a coincidence that there's a John the Baptist popping up in the New Testament who seems to be a phantom or duplicate of another John that is baptizing in the fountain of youth taking dunks and going back to the age of 32 Prester John John the Baptist well then who is Jesus are we just talking Joshua remember Just talking Joshua. Remember, Joshua is connected to this Kitsukol to a priest king, right? So, Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico, and his grandson Machir Amerik Mixcol to of the Toltecs was the grandfather of Tapuzin, priest of Kitsukol to who left Cholula for Rhoda in 1000 AD, like the Anasazi, right? David X. Lark family. Preston John, John the Baptist. So this bishop is adding to the story. They say they call it confusion. We're just talking Preston John by confounding him or comparing him with John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist is in the New Test, right? Let's go. He says that the Mongols say they have John the Baptist for chief. So the Mongols could easily be talking just about the Karyats, the Karyat dynasty that we got last time. So they're saying they got this John who baptizes, right, as a chief. Now, we surfed away with the Templar, I love to Irvin Reed, man, who, you know, has already been making this comparison between this David and this Moshe. You know, they both, they both killed a man, right? Now, you got this Joshua. So, does that make sense that, that there's a Joshua situation with this Kitsukulta? Priest of Kitsukulta? Priest, who's the priest of Joshua? Who's the priest of Joshua? Would it be a David? Would would a priest king would a priest king Preston John be a, a priest of Joshua? Kids of gold. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's make our dismount, man. We're just talking John the Baptist, man. So the Mongols quote say they have a Saint John the Baptist for their chief. The earliest known 
knowledge gained by Europe of Prester John dates 1145. All right, all right. John the Baptist, Prester John, John the Baptist, Prester John. Bap what do you mean baptizing? What did he do? Baptize what? To account for Prester John's age and work around it, Robert Silverberg writes in his 1972 book, The Realm of Prester John. What, man, what? Here's a part of the letter. Here's the version transcribed. A, a slightly later manuscript of the Prester John letter. Whosoever drinks of its water three times without having eaten will have no illness for 30 years. And when he has drunk enough, he will feel as if he has eaten the finest meats and spices. For it is full of God's grace. What is the water, my naga? A person who bathes in it. This fountain, whether he be of a hundred or a thousand, will regain the age of 32. No, listen up, my naga, for the dismount. We're just talking John the Baptist, right? Presto John, right? Wang, Khan, King. Know that we were born and blessed in the womb of our mother 562 years ago. And since then we have bathed, taken a bath, baptized in the fountain six times and this is by the 1100s 1100 and something so that was already six times so if they have turned back to 32 six times would that not put them right around this framework would that not put them you know what i'm saying right around this 700 600 situation if by the 1100s they've already taken six baths in the fountain in other words, Preston John was letting readers know that by the miracle of the fountain, John the Baptist, fountain of youth, he was 562 years old then. That was 1100s, man. And going strong. As a result of this interpolation, building on the fountain of youth, Herodotus has identified Ethiopia 1500 years before. Europe's difficulty in making contact with Preston John then was of no moment, for he was immortal. Because he had the fountain taking baths. We're just talking who? John the Baptist. Press the John. Immortal dragon kings, man. And could not wait longer to be discovered. He could wait longer to be discovered. Yeah, man. Because you're talking about the immortal dragon king, man. We're talking about the Exilarchs, man. We're just talking about the exit locks. And I was hoping we can pull this up. But it might not, you know, it might not want to work with us, man. So it was a good map, man, right here. Uh, come on. Come on, man. Yeah, I was hoping we can pull this map up, man. It literally had a Cham right there in the Americas, man. Uh, it's gonna be funny. It's acting funny with me. It's gonna make me have to reboot again if I keep messing with it. Get it next time, man. I'm gonna have to pull it up separately. Do some cold map drive, man. But y'all keep surfing away, man. I mean, you know, every day we build, every day we get stronger around here, man. Keep getting in the ether, man. You know, what I mean, this is just somewhere that we go, man, to come together and just to keep building, to keep filling our our tribal fire, man. Keep that fire burning. Make sure you, uh, you know, keep supporting the links, man. Keep supporting all the Drop Nation, man. Go in the Drop Shop, man. Support Paco's King Goyo, Aqua V Shea Butter, Crystal James Jewelry. Shout out to CJ Battle. Get that Crystal James Jewelry, man. Hit up BrotherNature.com, man. Make sure you know how to live well with Brother Nature. You know what I mean? We're feeling good, man, because it's all connecting so much in real time right now. That's all we could ever, you know what I'm saying, is, is this 
it's hope, you know what I mean? It's just to have more and more connectivity, the more we build, keep increasing, you know what I mean? Keep increasing the flow. Oh, come on, man. Stop trying to hijack me, man. Let's get it. And the hijack is always on the move, man. Let go. Yeah, they trying to hijack one on one us, man. But uh, luckily we got what we need. We got what we need already, man. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good, Doctor Hijack. Where's Dr. Hijack at, man? I got him right here, man. Dr. Hijack, man, you gonna stop hijacking this, man? No, Come no, on. no. A thousand times, no. Damn, Dr. Hijack. You still busy, man? No. You still trying to get us, man? No. Are you surfing the wave, man? No. Damn, yeah, man, Dr. Hijack, man. He ain't never surfing the wave, man. But that's all right, man. You come over here, you surf the wave with us. We drop off the Hijack every night. Just for this, man. You know what I'm saying? Anytime they jam up your laptop, anytime they, they jam you up, man, when you wake up and you go to sleep at night, we drop the hijack off together. You know, so we can just be hijack free every day, man. It's nothing like being hijack free every day. But yeah, surf the way in the drop shop, man. Let's see if we can get this going. There we go. Busy, man, they busy. Yeah, one of these files is making me, uh, it's, it's crashing my whole joint, man. 